right, y'all. What's up, fam? It's your boy here to give you guys a review for Love & Hip Hop uh, ATL. So, this uh, review is probably going to be longer than how I've been giving most of my Love & Hip Hop reviews. Why? Because, again, we got to get caught up to speed on some shit. And then we got to introduce some new motherfucking people. So, get we're going to get called the fuck up to speed. We're going to introduce some new people, some bullshit-ass plot lines and storylines and shit. And then hopefully from here, I can go ahead and give y'all them quickies. But it ain't going to be so quick today. So, we start off with this event for a rapper named Dollar, uh, a uh, ATL artist. I said, I don't I don't know who that is. So, like I said, there's absolutely no shade. Just don't know who the individual is. But it's... um. Almost like a uh, honoring type of uh, event and whatnot. Kind of honoring his legacy, what he's contributed to music and whatnot. And, you know, there you have Car Carly, Tammy, and Rashida. Now, these three heifers are kind of rehashing or kind of bringing us up to speed on shit. So Carly has had opportunities hitting her. She has another store, I believe, in L.A. and some other shit happening for her. So kudos to her. Tammy says, huh, walking and moving to a nice little place, but he ain't there because he's working. She feeling some kind of way. Uh, he is making his motherfucking paper to support you. So you you, you can feel some kind of way. All, you, you know what? Here's the way. You feeling some kind of way? Get your ass out there and motherfucking worry. If you, if you working and he working, you ain't got no time. Shit, you got mental on time to be feeling some kind of way, but ain't none of my business. Rashida is talking about how you talking about her uh, place her store and how conveniently enough the apartment that Kirk has is conveniently close enough to where her uh, store. So it's a play that she, you know, so she's between her house and that fucking apartment. Who the fuck y'all fooling again? We all knew that shit with you. Not doing it. Moving the fuck on. So same event, you have a girl named Karen King. So she's one of the uh, latest additions. Uh, Dollar was her nephew, if I'm not mistaken. She's also there with her boys. One is named Scrap. I believe his uh, his name is Scrap Delon, but it's going to be kind of crazy. We have a Scrap and a Scrap P. So I don't know how much of a role Scrap is going to play because she has another son named Sass. And we didn't hear Sass talk. So I think that it's going to be Scrap and, uh, you know, KK. Because Karen King, she likes to go by KK. I wonder if KK and Mama D gonna have some issues. I don't know. We ain't got nothing to say that they gonna have one. But I'm just saying, we can't have two boss bitches like that on the same damn show. And not think they ain't gonna be shit. Shit, quiet as kept. It's gonna be some shit between uh, Mama Rashida and Mama D. So, <laughs> I can't wait for that shit. But no, I'm on the motherfucking ass. That's probably gonna be the cliffhanger to get ass to come back next week. But we know. Y'all know we gonna come back. ATL is the best motherfucker, you know, uh, love and hip-hop franchise that they have. So y'all know we're going to come back. Because it's really hard to fake a lot of the shit they have going on. I mean, of course, you got fake-ass Rashida and, you know, Kurt, you know, fabricating shit. But, you know, whatever. What else? Um, Now, Scrap, uh, KK's uh, son, has a girlfriend. I believe girlfriend. Like I said, you know, I'm try I was trying to write and watch the same damn time. Named Tommy. Now, she talks to her briefly at this event, but, you know, she's so emotional, she can't really talk to her, but apparently, there's a rat, and I'm assuming hood rat, that's trying to creep back in to scrap life, and here's the thing, she gonna want her to handle it, because KK not finna handle it. I don't know, that's one of the things where it's just like, so you want somebody else to did, now, I, I got it, you want to protect your son, but you want another bitch to, come on now, come on now, but again, this gonna make for some good TV. All right, moving on. Now we got Mama D and uh, Scrappy, uh, you know, uh, link it back up. And what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to say the prince and the queen. I think that's what I might have to do because I'm not going to put over. I'm not going to overemphasize Scrappy and Scrap. I ain't going to do that. I ain't going to do that now. Nah, OK. Um, Better yet, Mama D and Scrappy do. That's what the fuck I'm going to call it. Mama D, Scrappy do. Then we got Scrappy KK. There we go. But uh, he wants to catch up with her because, you know, she got locked up on her birthday. And the and like I said, I mentioned it in one of my trending topics that the whole Dine and Dash thing. So she made it clear, like, you know, all I had was two, you know, shots of Hendrissy. And he was, no, he was like, what? no, Hendrissy. And he was like, what? what? Hendrissy? <laughs> you ain't supposed to be sitting here correcting your mama's grab a bar. 
But she pretty much was like, I didn't dine and dash. What happened is I went to use the, you know, little girl's room and my so-called friends, these sons of bitches up and left and left me with the bill. So I was agreeing to pay for, and y'all see I'm doing my Mimi talk with my hands. You know how Mimi, but you know, I did, um, I was going to pay for my portion. I wasn't going to pay for the whole motherfucking bill. And that's when I got hit with dining and dash, even though I didn't dash shit. And therefore, she got locked up. It's back on, but I, I need to finish my thought. So she, so I mean, she pretty much cleared that up. But we pretty much kind of understood that. So you know, of course, like, and it's one of those where, of course, it hit the uh, blogs and whatnot. And I think that's why they kind of glossed over it because we already knew about it. Um, Mama D says her and Ernest never had the honeymoon, and she even went so far as say, you know, he don't like paying bills. So I'm trying to figure out what is his employment because, I mean, he could go back to the old ways, but I don't think she quite wants that. Um, now, Scrabby says that he's not with Bambi anymore. We're going to see because the blog's been talking and apparently, I guess they possibly got engaged. So we might see this shit come to fruition. I don't know. Um, but he said that he smoothed things over with his baby mama. So he lost his girl, smoothed things over with his baby mama. But his relationship to Kirk and Rashida, who he considered to be brothers and sister, are in turmoil because when he went to court against Erica, he was expecting them to come on as a character witness and kind of, you know, say that he has a good character as a man and as a father. They conveniently didn't show the fuck up. And we already know how that whole hood shit, loyalty and everything. You do some shit like that, yeah, you ain't feeling them. And apparently, they didn't want to get involved. And Mama D... Feeling some kind of way. So she gonna step to motherfucking Rashida. Can't wait to see how this shit go. And then we have uh, Mimi and uh, um, talk about her new love. Now, the girls are saying, boy, if y'all keep up with the ball, and I have yet to mention it on my tabloids, on my tabloids trading topics with T, because I don't really give a fuck that Mimi is with a fucking girl. Wish that it was the big thing. Sorry, the fucking blogs fucked it up for you, but it still would have been a surprise, especially when Jocelyn told us at the reunion, I ate her motherfucking pussy, and, and she enjoyed it, and she was like, well, yeah, it was good. So we already fucking knew, you know what I'm saying? And again, it's one of those things where it's like, I don't understand why people give a fuck so much about somebody's fucking sexuality. It is fucking beyond me. But here's the thing, I don't care. I really don't. I didn't give a fuck when Margot said she was fucking America. I didn't give a fuck then. I don't. Who the fuck cares? But here's the thing. This is going to be her storyline. So they can't like brush it over like they did with the whole Mama D going to, to jail thing. And I'm guessing because this is more, I guess, because the reveal was somewhat recent of this in the vlogs. And they can't go back and try to edit this shit out. So we going to follow this bullshit. Okay. Then, you know, Mimi is bisexual or trisexual. Or I don't know what the fuck she wants to call herself. Don't really care. But we gonna follow this, so I didn't. We gonna be here for a minute with this interview. Hopefully, if we can speed through the shit, I'ma speed through the shit. But I want this to be a thorough introduction, so when I sit here and I start chopping motherfucking heads off, y'all understand why we didn't went from like a thirty minute review, which I hope ain't that damn long, to five and ten minutes. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, it looked like I can speed this shit up a little bit. Okay, good, good. I was sitting here like, I don't want to sit here and be talking all the motherfucking live long day. So, Mimi um, is... Oh, damn, the shit back on. Lord, I'm behind, behind. <laughs> she says that only Arian and I think her daughter are the only two that know about her and Chris. My whole thing is this. You know, first and foremost, Mimi, I really don't think you finna sit... You ain't finna live down, you know, sit here, you know, shower, right? We, we, you, we not gonna let you live that down. You not finna sit here and think you finna come back and we gonna forget that you was shower riding it up. Sit here leaking your own motherfucking sex. Come on, come, come on now. Come on now. How how quickly do you forget? No, we will not forget. And I'm sitting here trying to figure like, Aaron, bitch, you cool with this? And you the main motherfucker that's been slobbering over that pussy? You the one that wanted that pussy? Really? <laughs> oh, you cool with it? I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some shit going down. <laughs> I don't know, y'all. And Mimi gonna throw her birthday party, and that's gonna be her big reveal to everybody. Jock and Scrappy, since they are single, they have a bachelor's pad, and Jock has his eyes on Scrappy's assistant, who looks all very beautiful, if I might add. 
Um, now KK and uh Tommy, they talk, and KK says that she has an intuition that Tierra, Tierra being Scrap, her son's baby mama, might be creeping. She has the intuition. And she's saying that, you know, hey, he's been sleeping over there. Why is he sleeping over there? Sitting here, planting buzz and putting the battery in this girl's back. You feel what I'm saying? So I don't know if she's going to be the car lit red for this damn season. But it seems like she either she's going to be the one that brings the drama or she's going to be the one to kind of like set the stage. She's going to be the Mona, the physical Mona, where she's like, okay, I'm going to set some shit up, you know, kind of have my hand and pretend like I ain't did shit. That's going to be her. And, you know, KK is mad, apparently, that Tierra killed her dog so long ago. So, I guess that's what the beef is. I don't know. And Tommy says she going to get to the bottom of it. So, we going to see. Okay. So, I was wrong. We're actually going to get to see Mama D confront Rashida. So, like I said, I, I can say when I'm wrong. Okay. But we, we all know we're going to get left with a cliffhanger. So, I think the cliffhanger at this point going to be the damn uh, birthday party. We going to fucking see. But... So Jessica Dime, first of all, what the fuck is she wearing on her head? She's in here giving me George, Je I'm sorry, uh, George Washington, you know, motherfucking tees mixed in with a pink snuff of love for kiss. Okay, mixed in, looking like a motherfucker, and you know, lion's mane and shit. Like, I, I don't know what the fuck that shit was on her head. If y'all know, y'all please fucking tell me, because I am con and fucking fused. Anyway, <laughs> in a fucking way, y'all, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck style? <laughs> anyway, Jessica Dial, Carly Red, and uh Tommy, they go to a strip club because this is the strip club that Tierra scraps her boyfriend's baby mama works at. Uh, fucking crazy ass love triangle, you feel me? And Carly and them don't know. Now, in the process of talking, you know, uh, how, how the fuck did we get down there? Nah, nah, nah. She tells them that they're there to pretty much scout. And Carly Ray is like, oh, this some fuck shit, but I'm going to sit back and I'm going to, you know, sip tea. No, bitch, you was sipping that in greens, mixing that shit up. Again, Carly can be, you know, but she going to be messy again. She going to be the motherfucking bitch sit here and, you know, carry the storyline, so I'm cool with it. Now, Tommy mentions how, you know, she was in L.A. and how she's cool with Jocelyn. Again, I think it was somewhat random that that just kind of came up and whatnot. But be, actually, because I think um, Carly Rae's store is there, so she was there. Well, why were you there? Because I was hanging out with Stevie J and Jocelyn. I'm cool with Jocelyn. Now, you have Jessica Dime saying, oh, well, you know, me and Jocelyn hugged it out. But as I relived all of what happened last year, now we not cool. Okay, so conveniently, y'all not cool when you, you know what, not gonna do it, not gonna fucking do it. But both Carly Red and Jessica Diamond sitting there talking shit on Jocelyn. Now, uh, again, I'm only working with what they gave me. I feel some kind of way about Tommy because if you cool with Jocelyn and you just met these two hoes, why the fuck you finna sit there while they talk shit about your friend? Because if you watch this, do you not see how Jocelyn did fucking Carly Rae? Like, why the fuck are you only bringing me back this shit? And it's one of those ways, like, if you sit back entertaining motherfuckers talking, it's one thing which is like, okay, you don't like her, I'm cool with her, so let's just be cool and you don't talk about this person around me. And we gonna be Gucci. We ain't getting none of that. Now, that shit could have been said, but it's not what the fuck we saw. So right now, I'm already side, I'm side eyeing the fuck out of Tommy on some real shit. So, uh, Tara comes up and, you know, Carl, because now that Carl, you know who this is, so she starts to dig, trying to get to know who, you know, who she knows and whatnot. Actually, conveniently, she was like, yeah, because we were just, you know, talking about Stevie J. Oh, I know Stevie J. It's one of the ways, like, this shit is real convenient. That, you know, you want to pick this conversation back up when his hoe walks in. And, and, and a conveniently, she knows them. Okay. All right. But Carly Red does her digging, you know, getting on the girl good side. She even says that her baby daddy is scrap. And, you know, she deals with him when she wants to. Kind of reminded me of fucking top. You know what? We not. M Mona. Mona. We, you know, we not finna be recycling motherfucking storylines, ho. We not finna fucking. You not finna sit here and give me Tara, Peter, and fucking Amina. Oh, I, I fucking. Re I'm letting y'all ass know right now. If this shit starts to look, the, if it if it looks like, it and if it becomes that, I'm letting y'all ass know right now. I will sit here and cut this shit out from every motherfucker. 
try ch Betty Mona, try me the fuck if you want to. Try me the fuck if you want to. I'm I'm not finna fucking do it, but I'ma keep going with what the fuck I got though. <sighs> Y'all know I got high blood pressure, I'm sorry. Carly Red wants the girls to uh since it's it's almost just like, well, since Tommy that brought me out here, she's gonna return the favor. So we so pretty much they're gonna go spy on Mimi. But you fucks with Mimi. But they're gonna go and spy and here's the thing, it's one of those where Carly Red know what the fuck is going on. She may not, like I said, I don't think everybody know that she know, but she know. And why the fuck you finna sit in again? You know, Mona been in your ear. Mona done gave this bitch the lowdown. We know. We ain't stupid. I know y'all know. We know. And here's shit that got me. You invite uh, Tierra. You don't even know that hoe. And then Tierra did up and gave her nut. Like, it's one of those where in what world? Uh, uh, Anyway, I'm gonna just move the fuck on because that shit done. So, Rashida goes to her store press where her stepdaughter, uh, what is it, Kelsey, and her mom, uh, Shirlene, are working there. Again, this is one of those where, okay, y'all, I, I think that she's trying to create something there because they not doing work. Again, trying to give us some fuck shit. And you can see by looking on her face when Mama D walked in, she wasn't expecting Mama D to come the fuck in. Because she even kind of, because Mama D... Bossed up on that ass, didn't even say shit, and you saw it on her face like, oh shit. So this is one of those where this shit is not scripted. Mona did not tell me about this bitch coming up. Like that's what she gave us. I'll be right back. All right, so <laughs> Baba D a fucking fool, y'all. But I think we already do that. So she stands to it just like you know my son was hurt because you know this shit happened. Y'all didn't support. And she's like, well, we was, you know, I believe in L.A. doing the whole Rosewood thing. And it ran over. She was like, and her whole thing is like the day of. And that's some legit shit. It's like, it, like you let him know the fucking day. And it, as, here's the thing. Actually, from what Scrappy's saying, they didn't let him know. And if they did let him know the day of, it was after fucking court. So I can see why Scrap is in his feelings. And, you know, Shirlene walks up. And I can understand why Shirley walked up, but this had nothing to do with Shirley, despite the fact that it's the mother. You know, you feel what I'm saying? And I can understand a mother wanting to come in and check a bitch coming at her damn daughter crazy. I got it. But shit didn't get physical. You know what I'm saying? Volumes got, you know, like they volumes with her, but nothing got fucking physical. And, you know, uh, Shirley, whole thing is she's friends with Erica too. So you really expect her to pick a side? She was, and Mama D was like, she fucking knew Scrap before she fucking knew Erica. Like they, like they weren't even together. You know what I'm saying? And so it's that whole family loyalty type of thing. So and it's one of those where I think that once she never wanted to uh, get on the stage, and if that's the case, you she could have just told us like, look, you know you my brother. I fuss with you, but unfortunately, I am friends with your baby mama, and because I fucks with the both of y'all. I don't want to be in the middle of this. Please do not make me pick a side. Even though he would have been mad, I think he would have respected her more had she done that. Whatever the fuck. Now, shit started getting heated at Mama D. Like, y'all not finna double team me. And Shirley's like, well, that's not what he's like, but that's what the fuck it looked like, which I kind of sort of fucking agree. It's two of y'all against one of her. Now, my, now again, I think Mama D could have held her motherfucking nose so that she get ready to go right Mama D has a fucking party brown paper bag. She takes out the fucking, you know, like a uh, color, you know, like stuffing. She pulls out some motherfucking twigs. And I'm trying to figure out like, what the fuck is she doing? This girl builds a fucking nest and <laughs> pretty much tells Charlene the next time you lay an egg, pretty much the next time you give birth to a birth ass bitch, here's enough for you to sit on that shit. Ah, uh, holla. <laughs> I'm like, this is why we love Baba D for her fucking theatrics. I fucking love Baba D. I do. I fucking do. Now, Tierra uh, has four children. Her youngest is Scrap. Uh, I guess it's the Le the Leon, the Lion. I, I, scrap. 
that the youngest is his. She has three others. And, you know, he kind of, you know, when he, I guess, helps out while she's away and he gets to spend time with his son while helping the girls out. I think she has three girls with their fucking homework. Now, she works at a banking firm, but she's a bottle girl at night. Now, my whole thing is you you ain't need to tell your business like that. Like, I, that's one of the ways. You work for a fucking company that got banked. I don't think they need to know that you do this on the fucking side, even though you're not doing nothing wrong. But then you also on here looking at a ratchet. Not a good little boo-boo, but she sits down, she talks to Scrabble pretty much, and she's like, yeah, I spoke with these three girls, list all three girls, and he heard Tommy, and he ain't say shit. She was like, and they, I heard them talking about how they knew you, Stevie J, and Jocelyn. He didn't really say shit, but he's just trying to figure out what the fuck, and I'm glad he did not fucking incriminate himself. <laughs> he was like, I know Tommy didn't step to her. She wouldn't be this motherfucking cool if she did, but here's the thing, even if she did, Ladies, you gotta be cool. Keep up, keep 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 us bros on our motherfucking feet, though. You don't see him play your hand. You let them play that. I'm I'm giving y'all too much. I'll be back. <clears throat> All right, y'all. So let's go ahead and wrap this shit up, cause we're fucking done. So uh, Scrap and Tommy meet up, and Scrap already know the lowdown. So he kind of hit her with the whole, <clears throat> you know, pretty much. I knew, but he wanted her to kind of come through. He's like, all right, fuck it. Yeah, you fucking call me. Yeah, I was there. I was spying on the bitch and shit. I know about it. Are y'all fucking around? Like, I mean, like a real nigga do. You know, deny, deny, lie, lie. And even when your ass called, deny, deny, lie, lie. That's what the fuck we do. So he denied, you know, and all the shit. And she pretty like, look, either you, because her whole thing is, why have you not told her about me? And it's one of those where I could somewhat understand it where it's just like y'all really don't need to know each other, especially if it's one of those where if he wasn't uh, by the same exact time they shouldn't know each other. I'm on the fence, damn it. I'm on the motherfucking fence. But her whole thing is, look, either you tell her about me or I'm going to tell her about me. And his whole thing is he don't like ultimatums. He don't like, you know, being back into a corner and shit. And his, he was like, I'm going to tell her. But his confession was, I'm going to tell her when I want to tell her. All right, motherfucker. All right. See how this shit play out. So now um, it's the uh, revealing of Chris. And, you know, hey, t uh, Tommy gets introduced to Tammy and Rashida. And the introduction is, this is Jocelyn's friend by Carly. Now that's one of those where it's just like they already feeling some kind of way. Now again, this right here set the tone for when she gets ushered right the fuck on in because she's going to come from what I see later on both her and came she going to come in I'm assuming like halfway through assumptions. And then that's when shit get turned all the way the fuck upside down and apparently came Michelle's finna come with that shit too. So we going to fucking see. And, you know, Chris is uh, introduced. Everybody's shocked. Again, I don't think many of us were. Arian, you know, had said in her confession she knew. And, you know, she doesn't think that Chris is her type, but she doesn't know what her type is. Bitch, you trying to say you her fucking type. A a a bitch, I ain't doing this shit with you, Arian. I am I am not. Ariola, sit your ass down. I'm not doing this shit with your ass. Shit. But I will say, when we saw Chris, I guess either with her hair slipped back or just like with a fade, I don't know what it was, but I got to truly see her face. She is fucking beautiful. She is gorgeous. And it appears she's not wearing makeup. So if that is her natural beauty, that is a gorgeous woman. Gorgeous. I gotta give props what props is due. And again, if that is her natural face, she, and this is my opinion, Throw some as you want to, but if that is her in her natural state, even if it's very little makeup, she, in my opinion, is the baddest bitch on this motherfucking series as of right fucking now, in my opinion. But we can agree to disagree. That's all I have for this boo. Oh, I forgot. And then at the very at the ver ver end, uh, what's her name? Tierra walks in, and she's greeted by uh, you know, you know, the pink snuffleupagus, and that's where it ends. But it's one of those where. Tommy going pretty much going to put the shit out there with. If she don't know about me, bitch, she going to know today. Now, we get to see what is to come. And I'm not going to talk about a whole... Actually, well, I'll say it on here because I got the fucking time. I think Mona Scott is trying to be the front runner, more or less, for the black community in terms of the LGBTQ. Is that it? LGBTQ. Might be some other letters in there, but she's front running for that. 
And it's even painting the whole story that Waka had made a comment against transgenders. And that's how we get the other woman. Again, I don't know her, what her name is, but she will get probably introduced. And I think she met with Tammy. And, you know, she said to Tammy that I'm uh, transitioning. So I'm assuming that she is pre-op. And, you know, it comes up that, yeah, Waka doesn't like, you know, transgender. So this shit is going. It's one of those where we going to see a lot of shit exploding. And one thing about love hip hop is unlike the real households Mona ain't trying to get everybody to sing kumbaya but she needs isolated incidents where mother's gonna pop the fuck off and we gonna get some shit so i can't wait to see how this shit plays out again this is the most ratchet of all the love hip hops and this is the one that i think we all tune into and we all just soak this shit up you know like like a biscuit with some gravy sop that shit up so this is all that i have for the love of hip hop hopefully you guys enjoyed this hopefully and, of course, I will be back here next week, same time, same place, as long as I don't have to go under, and I'll give you guys another review. So, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. Let's keep the discussion going on below, and I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.